Hello Ascension kiddos, thanks for joining Pastor Nate as we talk for a few minutes about the New City Catechism. Uh, I miss seeing all of you guys, wish I could give you a high five after worship, uh, after singing together up front. Hopefully those days will come soon, but for now uh, we'll just enjoy the fact that we can uh, talk to each other uh, over the computer. Uh, normally in the fall, as you go back to school during the week, you know that on Sundays, on the Lord's Day, when we come to worship, you also come to classes and you get to hear from all of those great teachers as they talk to you about the Lord. And unfortunately, we can't do that this fall. And so, uh, Pastor Nate, me, I'm going to spend some time with you each week, just a few minutes, uh, talking to you about some important things uh, that that mom and dad want you to know about, that I want you to know about. And so we're going to begin today uh, talking about the New City Catechism. And uh, mom and dad maybe got you a copy or maybe you printed off a copy or maybe you have a copy on your iPad or on your phone, whatever you have going. Uh, but I want to ask you a question. So I know that many of you have, I think all of you have gone back to school now either in person or online or some combination of, of the two. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Since school is all about learning, what is the most important thing for you to learn? Not just in school, but in life, right? Uh, two plus two, two plus two equals four. Is that the most important thing for you to learn? Well, that's important because math is important, but I'm not sure that's the most important thing for you to learn. How about that the earth revolves around the sun? Is that the most important thing for you to learn? Well, I would say again that that is very important for you to learn because science is important, but that's not the most important. The most important thing for you to learn about in your entire life is three letters, one word. Let me spell it out for you. G O D God. Now I know that you have parents and you, many of you kids have been in the church for a lot of years and you have learned about God and that's wonderful. And so this fall, we want to talk a bit more about the things of the Lord. We want to bit talk about a bit more about God. And today and next week, we specifically want to talk about who God is what God is. And so I'm going to start our study with question two of the New City Catechism. I'm going to read it. And I, well, first of all, I'm just going to read the question. It says, what is God? Now, what do you find funny about that? What is God? Why does it say who is God, right? Because if, you're t if mom's talking on the phone and she gets off and you say, well, who were you talking to? You're wanting to know that person that she was talking to. And so why wouldn't we say, who is God? Well, the reason we don't say, who is God, is because when we say what, we recognize the fact that God is a being completely different than us, right? We're humans. We're creatures. God is spirit. He doesn't have a body like we do. And so the question even reveals a little bit about the uniqueness of God. What is God? Not necessarily who is God. So the question is, what is God? And here's the answer that the catechism gives. God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. Now let's just stop right there. There's more to the answer, but let's just stop right there. God is the creator of everything. How do we know that? Well, we look around us, we look at the trees outside, we look at the amazing complexity of our hands, the fact that we can make our fingers move like that, and we say, man, that is an incredible design. There has to be a designer, right? And so the Bible says in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. And so we just look around us and we know that God, that some being created all of this. But just exactly what that being is and what that being is like, we don't know. We know that he's powerful. We know that he's creative. We know that he's beautiful because look at these colors and look at all that we see. But we don't know specifically what he's like. How do we know that? How do we know that God is the sustainer of everyone and everything? And then the answer continues. He is eternal, infinite, 
and unchangeable in his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. How do we know all that stuff? I'll tell you how we know all that stuff. Where's my, here it is, the Bible. We know all that stuff because of the Bible. So we learn, we learn about who God is in terms of his power, in terms of his greatness, but in terms of these specific things that describe him. He's eternal. He has no beginning or end. He's infinite. He is free from all limitations. He's unchangeable. He's a rock, a firm place for us to stand. In his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice and truth. Now, some of those things, the fact that God's eternal, the fact that he's infinite, those, we can never be eternal. We can never be infinite. Those are things that God alone possesses, but we can be good. We can have wisdom. We can be people of truth. And so some of these things we are called as his creatures to reflect and to be like God in those ways. And that's what part of, part of what following God is about, is not just learning who he is and how he is so different than us, but also who we are and how we are supposed to follow him and how are we supposed to live our lives. And so this first question and answer, boy, it really has a lot. And it, we haven't even, this doesn't even hardly scratch the surface of who God is. God is, is bigger than our brains can, can fit in. Like David said in Psalm 139, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high, I can't attain it. And yet, we can learn something about who our God is. And we can be moved to adore him and to love him and to worship him. And so let me read it one more time in case you're memorizing it like me and, and my kids are. What is God? God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable in his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by him his will. I don't know, kids, but I am glad that there is a God who is way above me, who is way mightier than me, way mightier than my dad and my mom. One who knows me and loves me and can care for me. And so this is a great way for us to start our study. I thought we'd just close our time together uh, talking about what is God? This first question, question number two, just singing briefly uh, a little chorus that we sing at church sometimes is all. Um, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He Great God, we thank you that you are awesome, that you are the creator and sustainer of all things, infinite, eternal, eternal and unchangeable. Father, we can't hardly fit you into our brains, and yet we thank you that you love us and that you know us and that we can look to you and worship you and adore you. Father, continue to teach us who you are, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, kids, for joining me this week. Next week, we will go on to question number three. 
how many persons are there in God? And so I want to talk about that a little bit next week in our time together. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.